away. While Phil McGill of Vaughan travelled the length and breadth of, Isle of Ireland hearing the stories of heartbroken families who have been devastated by suicide. It's all contained in his uh, recent book, uh, Preventable Death, The Scandal of Male Suicide in Modern Ireland. And I'm delighted to welcome Phil McGillivon to the programme. Phil, welcome to the programme. Good evening, George, and thanks for having me on. Um, now, um, you, you're not going to be very popular in one of your key arguments in the book, Feminism has a role in male suicide. Oh, a central role, and I think we're past the uh, past the point of uh, worrying whether or not uh, we're popular or not. Um, there's an elephant in the room, the corner of the room, and it's 500 young male bodies every year. So I think we're past being uh, being popular or trying to curry favour. Never did you any good, did it, George? But how does this happen? I mean, what what does feminism do, or the role of the female in male suicide? I was speaking to young female journalist today about this and said, let's say you got sent um, to, to cover suicide in Afghanistan. Now, Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, there are more female suicides than male suicides. They shouldn't surprise you. Now, let's say you were going to write a piece on female suicide in Afghanistan and you weren't going to mention the Taliban. It would be kind of silly, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't make any sense, would it? Because you'd have to ask, what has that society done to women? So what you have here in this society is you have a disconnect between representation and reality. Um, first of all, suicide is a killer on this island of men, mainly young men. End of. Yeah, that's that's undeniable. And we've known that for 20, nearly 30 years. Um, and I was listening to your previous piece about Barbarossa and Operation this and that. This one could be called Operation Couldn't the Government Couldn't Care Less. Why is that? Why are you so critical of the government? Well, it's not just me that's critical of the government, though I certainly am. It's every grieving parent or suicide bereavement group I've spoken to up and down the island. Both jurisdictions get it in the neck. Um, uh, th this one, um, the 26 county jurisdiction, um, has done effectively nothing. And that's, that's quoting a man called Pat Buckley who lost two brothers to suicide in a place of 16 months down in Middleton in County Court. And I just want to put in that the proceeds from this book will go to the charity that that family started, which is the Let's Get Together Foundation, which is a suicide prevention initiative in County Court that actually works. You see, one of the things I heard you and your lead in before the news, he said, you know, no one knows what to do. That I have to take issue with that. We know what to do. There's a Choose Life campaign in Scotland, right, which is two things that we don't have here. One, it's fully funded. Yeah? It's fully funded. Two, it's not squeamish about the gender thing. It doesn't think it'll upset any of the ladies. It said, as Scotland, as here, in Scotland, it's a killer of young men. So it went to where young men congregate in Scotland, and that's usually association football. They're not that fond of the, the oval ball, George. It's right? just because they're not good at it, but yeah, carry indeed. on. So I've heard, carry so on. I've heard. Right? So it went to Scottish foot, professional football grounds, got the clubs involved, and for the last three years we have stats. The very early days, but for the last three years, there's been a year-on-year -year fall in suicide, and that means young male suicide. One point you did make was the issue of funding. Um yeah. Uh, funding is a huge issue in this country if we compare the two major killers, uh, road deaths and deaths by suicide. Well, for the last nine consecutive years, um, suicide has been the main killer of young men on, on, on the island and in this jurisdiction. Right? We spend £29 million on some, some such on road prevention. Road, uh, road death prevention, and so we should. This isn't a zero-sum game. But what we have is we have one million spent on suicide prevention. Now, the suicide prevention lobby thought they were going to get some extra money late last year. They are going to get an extra two million in it. The, the final hurdle, it was pulled. Right? Now, the, the, the start line of this book is the scandal of male suicide in Northern Ireland. The scandal is, there is no scandal. You can, I mean, even Antisha can make a joke about quote unquote committing suicide um, a term we should avoid it's complete suicide because it's no longer a criminal offence um, but he made that at a, a trade union rally in Donegal late last year and got a laugh now he subsequently apologised but it's so off the political radar it's so off the political radar 
um, that, that, that that is the scandal. Why? Right, because you went around the country, the length and breadth of it, and you talk about the female issue. I'd like to come back to that if you don't mind. What is the actual ratio of suicide in relation to men it's, and women? It's, it's eight out of ten suicides are male. Okay, eight to two. Yeah, then. it's unarguable, George. Even the National Women's Council couldn't argue it. But, it, it, you know, it, that, that is unarguable. Yeah. Eight to two is unarguable. But it, that doesn't necessarily mean that you then make the jump that says because it is the role of women that has no, caused it's that. it's not the role of women. It's the role of feminism. Quite a different thing. And well, explain I mean, that. Sorry? Explain okay. it. Well, first of all, some of the, the, the most uh, strident advocates of my analysis that I've met have been women. And some of the most strident um, opponents of my analysis have been men. So it's not a gender thing. It's about ideas. It's about ideology. But right? f feminism, in, certainly in its true sense, is about equality of the genders. Surely we can't argue about equality of the genders. Well, you, you may wish to think that that's the, the main message of feminism. It's not my analysis. Um, is that what you have is you have young men growing up in a society and there, there's a disconnect between what is represented to them and what they see as a reality. They're told they're oppressors of poor women or they're portrayed in the media and TV adverts and in, in popular comedies as being helpless and idiots and the worthy targets of, of revenge. They're currently selling a car just now where a, 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 a young man takes stuff out of a car and shuts the car door with his foot. Then you see revenge being wreaked on him because it's the it's the young woman's car. You can't think of a male-female equivalent. You cannot think, if you just stop for a second, George, you cannot think the way that men are portrayed in the media and TV adverts and in popular, uh, popular sitcoms, etc., across the pond in America and Britain and here, you cannot conceive of any role reversals. You what? cannot. Okay. The other issue, therefore, is the media. And, and I've, I've been at conferences in relation to suicide where the media has been represented mm. and the suicide bodies are attempting to educate the media. Isn't it fair to say that the media feel quite comfortable reporting on uh, road deaths, but, but they're not sure how to report on suicide? Yeah. I, I, well, one, of the, one of the things that, for example, the, the Samaritans say is the language is important. I mean, I was speaking to a young journalist this morning who consistently used the term commit suicide. So I said, would you please not use that? I've actually got a page in the book at the start about terminology. We use complete not commit, because yeah, it's no longer uh, a crime. Yes, so, I, so I, just, just sorry to interrupt you, I yeah. just have to say that as a result of the conference I went to, I've never ever used the word commit suicide since, well because it was, no, I mean, I'm not saying it in a well done no, sense, no, but, but it, it, was well pointed, done. it was pointed out to me, yes. and I saw the significance. Mm. And actually, until it's pointed out to you, it is incredibly hurtful to a lot of grieving relatives, because one commits murder, one cannot commit suicide. But yes, you're right that the media have to learn how to um, uh, you know, report on completed suicide. It, it, but actually, the media's role is much, much larger and much more central, in my opinion. Uh, and that is how one of the, one of the chapters in the book um, is, is about um, how in America an academic found out that he couldn't use the word manly to describe a colleague. He was asked by the, man, the editor of an alumni magazine, who's a female, can you please think of another word? And he wrote a book called Manliness, and I, I, I have a chapter in the book called The Forbidden Word. When you and I were growing up, George, the term manly or manliness was something that young lads you know, looked forward to, aspired to. When did it happen that manliness wasn't something they had to aspire to? So, so that the media, the media is the front line in this. The media is a front line. Popular culture, be it in print, electronic, whatever, is to say, we have to have a... Pat Kenny said on the Late Late Show a few weeks ago, and he had Father Aidan Troy on, who has a long interview in my book. I went up and spent a few a few days in Belfast um, with various projects and with, with Father Aidan at Holy Cross. Is 
We need to have a national conversation about this. This should be as important a national conversation as we had about the Northern Ireland conflict. And when we focused on that as a problem, we as a people on the island could solve the problem. And we did solve the problem. We can solve this. This doesn't have to be. This can be fixed. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me. By the way, as you heard uh, Phil say there, his book, uh, Preventable Death, is all the proceeds are going to the Let's uh, Get Together Foundation. It's nineteen ninety nine. You'll get it at Phil Macgiola Vaughan. Uh, Macgiola, of course, is M A C G I O L L A, and then Vaughan is B H. A-I-N, Askelga, of course. Phil Macchiolavon, 1999, uh, all for the Let's Get Together Foundation. My thanks to my guest, Garrett says, George, maybe I can put the feminism thing simply. If suicide was killing as many women as men, there would be a national outcry.